This is a tutorial showing how to make this very textural kind of stripey dishcloth using crochet. This is for absolute beginners. I'm going to show you how to do the stitches, how to start, how to turn the work, um, everything to get you going. And a dishcloth, yeah, they're going to be cats in this video. <laughs> A dishcloth is a great um, place to start because even if it's wonky or the stitches are uneven, like this one isn't perfect. This one has also hasn't been um, like pressed out, but it's okay if it's not perfect. So this is a great place to start and I'm going to show you how to do it. Sugar and cream cotton crochet yarn, I guess it's called, but it's by Sugar and Cream. It's in the color Accru, so it's a natural and it's a four ply cotton yarn or thread and I'm going to be using a number five crochet hook. So to make a slip knot to start off you want to have your working end on one side of the hook and then the you know what's connected to the cone or the ball of yarn on the other. You're going to cross over the end piece so you've got like a little loop and then you're going to grab the end of the yarn that you're going to like that's connected to your ball and pull that through. So now that we have the slip knot done and you want to leave a tail that's big enough to be able to weave it into the finished dishcloth. So I like to leave, I don't know, maybe about six inches or so. Um, so now we're going to start making what's called the foundation chain and this is what um, gives you something to work the stitches into on um, the first row. So for the dishcloth, to make a dishcloth about this size, well this size exactly, I'm going to chain 32 times and a chain is just wrapping the thread around the hook and pulling it through. So I'm going to wrap it. So that's one chain. Oops. This is two. Okay, so we're going to chain 32 times. And the way you count a chain, well, this <laughs> I had to set this down um, so it looks a little bit messy. But um, the way you count a chain is each one that looks kind of like a braid is a chain. So we've got one, two, three, four. So we're going to keep going till we get to 32. And you want to keep these chains kind of loose because you've got to be able to fit the hook inside. Okay, so now we're going to do this a single crochet stitch. So we're going to skip the first two chains and start working into the third. Um, so we're going to, going to, you don't count the one that's on the hook, we're going to count one, two, and start working into the third. The way we're going to work into the third is we're going to stick the hook into this loop, kind of this upper loop right here. Okay, so we're going to skip two, stick that in, and this is the single crochet stitch. So you insert the hook, wrap it around, wrap the yarn around, it's called yarn over, Pull it through once, you've got two loops on, wrap it again, and pull it through. And that's a single crochet. So we're going to repeat that. Insert the hook, pull it through, yarn over, and pull through the two loops. Okay, we'll work into the next chain. Same deal. Wrap the yarn, pull it through. And so one thing with this four ply yarn, you can see like it's easy to get the hook kind of caught into one of the plies of the yarn. So just be mindful of that. And if you do ever, like if that happens or if you mess up the stitch, it's totally fine. You can just unravel it and start again. So see, we've got a nice little row of stitches there. So I'm going to work into all of the chains and we'll end up with 30 single crochet stitches because 
we skipped the first two. So I'm gonna do that. The nice thing about dishcloths too is that if you do like lose count, you make you know you make 33 chains instead of um, 32. It, you're not gonna mess anything up like you would if you were wearing I don't know if it was like a sweater or something like that where the fit really matters. If a dishcloth is a little bit more of a rectangle than a square, no problem. And when you're working through this, oh, I got a little stuck there. When you're working through this first, um, the first row, it's always kind of the squirreliest because you've got this little chain um, like flapping around. Sometimes it'll curl and so it's okay. This is kind of the, probably the trickiest part. Okay, so when you get to the end of the row here, this is what you'll have. It's okay if it looks a little bit curly. You can kind of stretch it out. Okay, and now we're going to turn. So this is our first turn. So what we're gonna do is we're going to chain two. And when you're turning, you always do a certain number of chains depending on the stitch. And that allows some space for then, see, the next row of stitches will go here. So it kind of creates the, um, the edge that you need. Okay, so we're going to, let me show you that again so I can pull out those two chains. So we've got the loop on here. We're going to chain, which is just wrap over, pull through, just like we did in the beginning. Wrap over, pull through. Okay, and now we're going to turn the work. So I've been working on... Um, this piece in this direction and I'm going to flip it so now this is facing the other direction so that's it you literally just turn it around so it was like this I've done chain two now I'm going to flip it around okay and so now I'm going to again skip those two chains I just did just like we did in the beginning skip those two and I'm gonna start working in the third. If you look right here, again, we have what looks like a braid, kind of two V's going in. And we wanna go through both of these loops. So we're going to stick the hook in just under those two loops, right into this space right there. So we're gonna stick it under those two loops and we're gonna keep doing our single crochet. So we're going to Pull the yarn through, yarn over, and pull it through the two loops, like that. Now, what we wanna do, so we hopefully can get a square or a dishcloth with, with straight lines, I'm gonna put a stitch marker here because this is my first stitch in this row. The reason why I'm gonna put a marker there is so I don't accidentally work into the chain, which is really easy to do when you're heading back over all, all of my early dish claws are like trapezoids because I didn't use stitch markers. So I like using, let's get the cat out of here. I like using these little bulb pins, but they have like plastic stitch markers and we're just gonna mark this stitch right under those two loops where we inserted the crochet hook and just fasten that. You can use like if you start on this and you're like, oh, dang it, I don't have stitch markers, you can use safety pins or um, paper clips, anything like that. Okay, so now we're going to, we've got that first single crochet done, so we're going to keep going down this row. So again, we're gonna stick the hook in under those two loops, pull it through, wrap, and pull through two. So we're gonna keep doing that single crochet through here. And it's okay, like yours might be looser or tighter. Right now, like just don't, I know some of the early crochet books that I read talk a lot about tension and um, like how many stitches you needed to have per inch and all of that stuff. And I think that's all really important. Like it's in those books for a reason. 
But I think that it can prevent you from like, or just make you feel like you're doing it wrong or prevent you from just getting started. Like, let's just start. Let's just make a dishcloth. And you know what's going to happen as you work on them, as you make more of them, your stitches are going to get more even and your tension is going to get better. So, so just do it. Just start doing it. And you're going to get better as you go. And then as you get better, then start paying attention to some of those more technical things that can make your work really, um, you know, can make your work a bit more perfect, I guess I would say. Another thing to keep in mind as you're working through the loops, when I first started, I would get kind of confused about like which chain I went through. And that's another thing that you just start to sort of learn what it looks like, what the stitches look like, where you put your hook. It becomes less confusing. And again, you learn by doing. So, so just do it. And if it ends up looking, you know, weird or wonky or you only worked in, let's say you only were working into like the front loop and not the back loop sometimes and other times you were working through both loops, like don't worry about it. Just, just keep on going and you're going to have some really wonky dishcloths that make you laugh, but that's okay. You know what? Because they still work. They still have a great um, texture to them and this yarn is pretty inexpensive. So this is a good place to just play and experiment. Every time I'm learning a new stitch, which I'm still learning, I mean, there are like thousands of crochet, crochet stitches that I haven't tried yet, um, I make a dishcloth. Okay, so we're coming to the end here. And because this was our first row, we don't have a stitch marker. So I wanna take a minute and make sure that I think this is the last one. Again, if you're off, if you end up with one extra stitch, it's no big deal because it's a dishcloth. It's not gonna hurt anybody. Okay, so that looks good. So we're gonna turn this work again. So here's how we've been working on it. We're gonna chain two. Here we go, one, two. Okay, and then again, we're gonna turn this around. What was front is going to be back. What was on our right is going to be on the left. Okay. Then we're going to make sure we're skipping those first two chains. And then we start working right into this stitch. Okay. And then stop. Put a marker there. So now we have a marker on both sides that will keep moving as we work up but this will help with, you'll just be thankful for these markers. So there we go, we got a marker there. Now we're gonna do, this is our last row of single crochet, and then we're gonna do a different stitch for one row. So it's a two for one, you get to learn two stitches on one project, and they're different. So the single cro crochet stitch is very simple. It's very um, tight. There's not a lot of holes in it. And then the other stitch that we're gonna learn is called a treble, and it's a very open stitch. So um, it, this'll give you kind of two different textures. And so a treble stitch is really good for like um, making a, if you wanna make a string grocery bag or um, I don't know, just anything where you want a really nice open weave. I've done dishcloths just out of the treble stitch and they look pretty cool. But it is very open, so it's kind of nice to alternate it with a tighter stitch so that your um, whatever you're making has a bit more structure to it. Okay, now we know we're at the end of this row because we've hit our, our little bulb pin. I got a text. Okay. So we're going to do one last stitch. I'm going to take out my marker. And now we're going to switch to a treble stitch. And since a treble stitch is taller than a single crochet, we need to chain four times. So we're going to do one, two, 
three, four. We're gonna turn the work like that, okay? So we're working in the other direction. Now we're gonna start working in this first hole. We're gonna skip those four stitches and we're gonna do the treble stitch. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so to do the treble stitch, we're going to wrap around the crochet hook twice. So we've got three loops, okay? Then we're going to insert the hook under both loops, just like we did with the single crochet. We're going to grab the yarn, pull it through. So we've got four loops on right now. Now we're going to wrap, pull through two. So we've got three. Wrap, pull through two. Wrap, pull through the remaining two. So you see the difference in the stitch? We've got this really tall stitch versus a really tight short stitch. And what that looks like in the dishcloth is it gives you this sort of open work. These are the treble stitches. And then what's cool is with the single crochet, because we're turning it, you get a little bit of a, um, I don't know, it kind of looks a little bit channeled. It just gives a really cool effect. So that's why we're adding this treble stitch in here. Okay, let me show it again. So of course you can always rewind and watch it again. So we're going to wrap over twice, like that. Insert the hook. Oh, actually, you know what I'm going to do first? Since this was my first stitch, I'm going to mark it at the top. The place where I'm going to put my hook at the end. So let me mark that. All right, now we're going to the second stitch. So wrap twice. Insert the hook. Pull the yarn through. Got four loops on. Yarn over. Pull through two yarn over, pull through two, and I always kind of tighten it a little bit, yarn over, pull through two. So I tighten it afterwards so that the treble stitch ends up being kind of nice and tight so you don't have strands. Whoops, I forgot to wrap it. Okay, so we're going to do the whole row in the treble stitch till we get to the end. And if you notice while I'm working, I'm sort of alternating when I have my hook up or down. And I don't know if that's like right or wrong. That's just sort of instinctively how I started doing it. So I'll have my hook up. I'll turn it down when I'm putting it through and grabbing the yarn. Turn it up again when I wrap. And then I'll turn it down again when I pull through. And it just seems to get snagged less when I when I do that so I don't know if that's proper technique or not but like I said I the way I work is just like just do it don't overthink things you might end up learning a, you know picking up a few like maybe that's a really bad habit or something but um, but you know that's stuff you can figure out along the way and then if you're like well I'm gonna do serious crochet work then, you know, then you can kind of fix some of that stuff. But ultimately, uh, the important thing is the end result. And did you enjoy making it? it? It really, like if you're holding your crochet hook funny or doing something that, you know, the way you like to feed your yarn, like I wrap, I wrap my pinky around it. That's kind of how, I, or I wrap my, uh, I guess my ring finger around it. Um, however you do that, like it's okay. I think people get hung up on just all the little technical stuff and making sure they're doing everything right. When in the beginning, it's like, you know what, just make a dishcloth, just have that victory and then go from there. 
we've got one more to do and I know because that one's marked and you can see like if this bulb pin wasn't here it might be a little confusing you might start working into um, some of those chains and you end up with a, then a really wonky dishcloth <laughs> which again that's okay but let's let's do our best we'll, we'll try to mark it and try to make things even. Okay, so we finished this row. We've got a nice row of treble stitches. I've got the sun is coming in now. Here we go. Block it with my bag. Okay, so we've got these treble stitches here. And now we're going to turn and do three more rows of the single crochet. So because we're doing single crochet, we can, um, we just chain twice. So we're going to go chain one. Oops, hold on. I'm hung up on something in here. If you can't move your hook like something, you're caught on something. So just back out and try again. So we'll do one, two. We're going to turn the work the other direction. What's front becomes back. What was off to the right goes off to the left. And this ends up looking a little bit fan shape, but we'll kind of tighten it up and straighten it out as we go back to the single crochet. So we're going to do single crochet again. Skip two. We're going to insert in that first one. Wrap and pull through. And if you want to, like if you don't want to alternate stitches to start, just do a whole dishcloth out of single crochet and then do a whole dishcloth out of treble. Um, I haven't yet done dishcloths where I'm, or done stitches where I'm switching like single double single double that makes kind of a wave pattern because I just lose track I usually am doing this while I'm watching TV or doing something else and so without giving it my focused attention I lose track of what I'm doing so what I found is if I can do this these stitches are so different and if I can do it three rows of one one of the other I just don't get confused I can do it without having to give it a lot of thought and this is a nice way to, to practice and learn two different stitches. So now we'll do single crochet for three more rows just like we did in the beginning. Okay, so now we've done, this is the whole pattern. We've done three single crochet, one treble, three single crochet, and now we're going to do a, a row of treble again. So um, that's the whole pattern that we're going to do. So we'll chain four again to do the treble. And just to clarify, um, when you're looking at different crochet books, um, the stitch names are different if you're doing um, the UK stitches or US stitches. And that was super confusing for me at first. The UK calls the treble stitch what we call the double crochet in the US. And um, so it was funny. I was all excited about learning a new stitch, and I actually was doing the same stitch. It was just called a different name. Okay, so we're going to do treble stitches again. And do one whole row of those. I'm going to mark my first stitch again. Okay, so let me switch to one I've already gotten a little further on. And this is the same yarn, it's just in a little, I bought it in a roll instead of the cone. So here's how, whoops, let's see where I'm at. Here I'm at. Okay. get my hook back in. Okay, so here's how the pattern looks as it goes a little bit further. So you can see three single, treble, three single, one treble, three single, one treble, three single, one treble. And then the end result looks like this. So to make it square, you repeat that so you have five rows of treble and six rows of the three single crochet. And then you're done with your dish cloth. So let me show you on this one then how to, like what you do with this end. So what you need is a tapestry needle, 
So these have pretty blunt ends and they're nice and big. You can fit these thick yarns through. So I'm going to put the end through and then we're going to weave it in. And I don't have any particular like fancy way that I do this. I just kind of weave it in. Oops. I do try to be mindful of the pattern so that I don't like cinch up some of the treble stitches or something. I try to kind of work with the pattern so you don't really notice where I've stitched in. So I'm weaving this end in and then I'm going to weave in one direction and then go back the other way. And um, I do that so sort of like in sewing when you do the sewing machine back and forth it creates um, some tension and it's just kind of the same idea with this. There's no super rhyme or reason to it. And then I'll, um, I'll tie it off. And I don't know if you're supposed to do this or not, like if it's an official thing, but I just feel better tying it off, doing a couple of knots just so it stays put. That's just how I do it. Other people might do it differently. So I've got the end kind of woven in. I make sure I put that knot where I can kind of tuck it in and hide it. And I think if you're doing finer work, again, this you might not want to do that, but for a dishcloth, it's okay. And then I just snip off the end, kind of tuck the knot in, and there you go. And you can um, wet and pin this out just gets the fibers used to their new shape. Or um, I read also you can use a steam iron. Or since it's just a dishcloth, like it's okay. Just use it as is. Um, you can fold it on up and there you go. Got a dog hair in there. Anyway, that's how you do this um, cute little, kind of a very farmhousey dishcloth.